Crushing happens in two parts. There's a primary crushing and a secondary crushing. The primary crushing happens off-site where we have to, if you demolish a building, you get very huge pieces of concrete slash rock. They need to um, be reworked into a smaller part, which we call minus 100 millimeter. That would, to give you an indication, be just a bit smaller than your fist size. That material then comes into inside the factory where we're going to go into the secondary part of the crushing and it all happens here right behind me where it gets fed into the bin. The material then gets sifted. The very fine material, um, smaller than one millimeter, gets sifted out because uh, very fine material is not very good for concrete making and it's also a way of getting rid of the clay content within the demolished material that was collected from site. The rest of the material will then go through a range of screens and it will be crushed smaller and smaller until we get to a stone that is about six millimeters in size and your sand content. We remove the steel by means of magnets. Um, we remove about 10 tons of steel within the factory each month and when I'm saying that all the rebar all of those things has already been removed we're only talking little pieces of wire nails and screws once the material has been made in the sand and the stone that we recovered the, for the start of the brick making process it would come and as you see there's three bins on my left hand side the material would get placed into these bins it would be the sand we produce the stone we produce and some newly mined sand just to get the grading of the concrete correct. From here it will drop down onto a weigh bridge where the material gets batch weighed and then that material gets transported on a conveyor belt into the skip which would take it up to the mixer where we mix about 1.2 tons of concrete at a time and it would be lasting just over a minute. But the brick making plant is a very old BB4 machine that we are still using bricks get produced these products will then come out of the machine and go up into the stacker it stacks it up eight pallets high from where the forklift will pick it up and drive it down into a drying tunnel where the bricks or blocks whichever products we manufactured will be drying and curing for a 24 hour period from there the second day after the 24 hours that product will be removed and go onto the de-stacking line gets de-stacked physically by hand. It's a way of also removing reject products because you can see it with the eye and it ensures that you send less reject products out to site to your client. These products will then be stacked inside the factory under roof. It's very nice for a brick making plant to be under roof. It's what we call luxury accommodation and uh, climate controlled although it's controlled by mother nature. <laughs> We stack the products inside for about a week where it cures inside outside of direct sunlight before it would then be moved to the outside area to cure further. Product would typically be in our possession for about two weeks for curing before it gets moved out to site. Okay, paving is made in two parts. We've got the normal board and wash sand and stone and then the recycled stone which we add to it. After the products have cured in their molds, uh, depending on the weather and the side of the product, 24 to 48 hours, they get demolded here on this side. We've got a machine that helps to move the polyurethane mold so that your product can come out and then the rest gets stacked by hand. The other thing why this process is also very um, manual and not automated We've got about 300 different products of molds that we do on the paving side and all the mold sizes change and to make a machine to comply with all of those different sizes becomes very difficult. That's the extremely manual process on this side.